whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. Who is the Lord? The Lord is Jesus. And Jesus is the Word. He is the way, the truth, and the light, life. It isn't... Freedom isn't found in simply saying that the Lord has set me free. If I'm standing in a cage and I'm locked in this cage and a man comes by and unlocks the door and even opens the door for me but I continue to stand inside that cage and yet I jump up and down and say, I'm free, I'm free but never leave that cage. How free am I? What is it that sets me free? The way, the truth, and the light. The word, the life. If I do not walk through the open door or open the unlocked door, out into free living, out into freedom. I am not living in the reality that I've been set free. I've been given this gift of my freedom, but I'm remaining in the cage. Am I truly being free? No. Does that mean that my release from my imprisonment has been rescinded or taken back away? No. It just means I haven't received it yet. I haven't accepted it yet. I haven't embodied it yet. Enacted it yet. Right? I haven't activated my freedom yet. No matter what I'm saying with my mouth. Likewise, if I go around saying the Lord has set me free. And so I am free indeed. And, and yet I am not truly embodying and activating that freedom by participating and living in such a way as to enter into union with the way, the truth, the light, the life, the word, love. Am I being free? That is, if I say I'm free, but I am being unforgiving or am even refusing forgiveness from someone else. Am I really free? If I say I'm free, but I am barring someone or disqualifying someone from receiving the love of Christ, am I really being free? Not that I can truly disqualify someone, but I can stand in between someone and Christ, or try and stand between someone and Christ, and declare to that person that they are unqualified for the love of Christ. And if I do such, am I truly free, even if I say I am? If I say I'm free, and yet I act in any way contrary to the way, the truth, the light, life, love, can I truly be in a state of freedom, in a process of freedom, in a way of living that is free? Again, I'm not saying that I'm disqualifying myself from freedom that freedom is already being afforded to me the gate has been unlocked 
perhaps it's even been swung open. But am I staying inside that cage? Even worse, am I shutting the gate and locking it back up myself? Maybe I say that I'm not, maybe I say that I am free, but maybe the feelings in my heart, the thoughts in my heart, the judgments I'm casting in my heart towards myself or towards others are effectively trying to do just that. How do I know if I'm really being free, if I really believe that I'm free? Because right? if I really believe that I am free, that will be reflected in my actions. But I can look at my actions, my thoughts, my feelings, my motivations, the words that I say, and I can determine, right? To some extent, I can reflect on myself like that and say, what do I really believe? do I really believe? Right. Just like a kid who is afraid to dangle his feet over the edge of the bed, and yet the kid says, there's no such thing as monsters under my bed. Yet he screams out at night because he's afraid that there's something there. What does he really believe? Does he really believe that there's no monster under the bed? It doesn't appear so. So, do I believe I'm free? And this isn't just an on or off state of being. Right. All of a sudden, I realize that I'm not being as free as I'm permitted to be, as I'm empowered to be. And all of a sudden, now I can just do that, right? Just completely receive it and thereafter be in a constant state of walking and freedom that's been given to me. This is something I believe I can always grow in. Right. It's a matter of faith, trust, belief. And the more you experience the reality of that in which you have faith and trust and belief, the stronger that faith and trust and belief becomes. Just as when you experience something that appears to be contradictory to that faith, trust, belief, that faith begins to waver a bit, perhaps. And maybe sometimes this is a good thing. Once in a while we get shaken. And what we thought we believed, perhaps we didn't quite believe as deeply as we thought. Perhaps what we believed wasn't truly worthy of believing. And then experience helps us reform that. And it's no different with freedom, with spiritual freedom. Early on in the Christian walk, I can learn scripturally that whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. And I can latch on to that and have a sort of emotional reaction to that that is to some degree joyful and happy and empowering. But no doubt I will have experiences in the years that follow 
that indicate that I either, either have a wrong idea of what freedom is, what it means to be free, I will have a misplaced understanding of just how deep my faith is in that reality of being free. And have a lack of understanding about what that freedom is for. Right? Freedom to do what? Freedom to be how? That's ultimately what freedom is about, right? Freedom is about freedom to engage in certain things, to do certain things. And also, freedom to be certain ways, right? We talk about, let's say, things like freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and so on. Or we talk about free software, or buy one, get one free, right? or being free from depression, or being freed from a prison. We're talking about some sort of existence of opportunities before us. Opportunities of doing and being. At least those are two ways I could think of it currently. Opportunities of doing and being. If I reflect on the way that I am and the things that I do, does that indicate to me, if I honestly reflect on those things, that I really believe that I am free. Free to be how? To be whom? Free to do what? In what way? Free to access what? That's another dimension. Freedom to be, freedom to do, freedom to access. As a Christian who is set free by the Lord, what do I have freedom to access? And with that freedom, are there certain responsibilities that come along with it? If I really truly believed that I could access this thing and that I've been granted the freedom to access this thing by the Lord, what does it mean that I'm not choosing to access it? Or that I'm choosing to access it in the way that I am? If I'm free to be certain ways, and I look at myself and how I am being, what does that mean? What does that say about my belief in that freedom and how I'm choosing to activate it, enable it, embody it, apply it? How I choose to apply the freedom that I have faith that I have reflects something about my heart. Number one, if I'm not doing and being and accessing what I say I have freedom to do and be and access, do I really believe what I say I believe? Probably not. So then I could say, what do I really believe? If I am doing and being and accessing the things that I believe I have freedom to access, What does the manner in which I employ that freedom say about my heart? Am I doing these things? Am I I using this freedom in a way that is 
merciful, kind, loving, and so on? Or is there some degree of bitterness, resentment, and so on, wrapped up in the manner in which I'm using my freedom? Because don't think, I shouldn't think that just because I'm doing something that God has given me the freedom to do and the power to do doesn't mean I'm doing it with the right heart. Right? Just think of 1 Corinthians 13 and all the people who were doing the things in God's name who were casting out demons, doing miracles and all. And yet they lacked love. They lacked the proper heart, the proper motivation, the proper intent. Do I believe I have freedom? And if so, what am I doing with it? And how does that reflect my heart?